Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to access ebooks and other digital resources using the app Libby, which is powered by Overdrive. So you can see I'm using my phone here. I have it, Libby downloaded on it. I'm just going to open the app. And when you open it for the first time, it makes it really easy, a nice introduction. It tells you hi, and you just click on hi. It gives you a little bit of information about the app, and you can go right to find my library. When I click that, it'll automatically start looking in the area, and it brought up this location here, which actually isn't the closest library to me, but it is part of Harris County. Um, so I could click yes. I could also click no. Um, maybe the library that pulls up is not the library you want. Um, so you can either use my location, or you can search for a library, which is what I'll do here. So now I'm going to type in the name of the library, and the one closest to me is the Katy Branch Library, which you can see that it automatically pulled that up. So if I select that, it, go ahead, it goes ahead and shows me the main page of Overdrive, and it lets me know that if I have a library card, I can add it now, and if I open this app but I didn't have a library card, it would invite me to visit a local branch. They even include a branch map so that you can search it for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and add my card. Now it's going to ask me to sign in, and you just put in your library card number. It's as simple as that. And I do know mine by heart because I work for the library. You hit sign in. You can also sign in with Facebook or if you already have an Overdrive account and prefer to use that, you can. So now I'm signed in, you can see I have one library card, and it goes ahead and shows me the like main collections. It shows me different genres. Um, right now we're doing a summer reading challenge, so it gives you some recommendations for that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different stuff right there. But I'll go ahead and start by looking at my shelf. Now, my shelf tells me um, loans, holds, tags, and activity. So loans would be any ebooks or e audiobooks that I have checked out, which I don't have any. If I go over to holds, it does show me I have a hold on this book called My Life with Bob. Um, it shows me it's an ebook. If it was an audiobook, there would be a little like uh, headphones under it. It tells me when I place the hold, and I can even click on that book, and it'll let me read a sample. I can edit my hold. Maybe I don't want it right now. Maybe I want it later. I can cancel the hold and it gives me some general information on the book itself. If I go back, um, tags are a way where you can, you know, maybe add stuff that you want to read, like or dislike are automatically there. This little book thing I added for books I maybe want to read in the future. And then activity will, um, well, it says right there, this is your activity timeline. So it'll let you know, oh, you place this book on hold on this day, you install the app on this device. It's very cool. Now if I go back to the library, I'll be able to browse. It's so uh, intuitive, it's very user friendly. Um, I can search as well. Um, but this little plus sign right here, what it does is um, it allows filters. So availability, if a title is not available right now, it will ask you to put a hold on it. So let's say I only want titles that I can check out today. I can sort them by relevance, popularity, date added, release date, author, title. Language, um, they have a few different languages available here. Um, audience, you can kind of change that if you want something more general, something for kids or young adults. And then compatibility. Now, Libby works on Android and iOS devices, um, but it is not an app available for Kindle Fire. If you do prefer to read on your Kindle, you can select only titles that have Kindle availability and there is a setting to where you can get this to work on your Kindle, which I'll show you in a minute. Then if I hit Apply Preferences, it's only going to show titles that I can check out today. So we've got The Martian, we've got Gone Girl, which you can see is an audiobook by that little headphone logo. Um, you can look at the collections as well. But if I want to search for a particular book or author, I can go ahead and hit Search the Catalog. I can go ahead and just type in a title or an author to see if they have anything. Or I can hit more. You can do title, creator series, the ISBN, 
format, so maybe I only want audiobooks or I only want ebooks. Um, they have some read-along titles as well if you want to read to kids. Pre-release titles, that means that these are books that have not come out yet, but you can go ahead and put them on hold. So I'm going to go ahead and hit less, and I'm going to type in an author that I like, who is Ted Decker. And we'll see if we have anything by him. So you can automatically see they've shown me that this is an author. So if I click that, it's going to only show me books that are available to check out right now, because that's a setting I chose. And I didn't pick ebooks or audiobooks, so it's going to show me a bit of both. So we've got a lot of different stuff here. Um, so it's kind of cool, you get a lot of different options. So, for example, let's say I'm interested in this book called The Sanctuary. I can either read a sample or borrow it right from this screen. This little logo right here is a tag. Um, looks like a little luggage tag. I can also click on the image of the book and it brings up some more information. I can borrow it from there as well or read a sample. It gives me a little summary of the book, which is great. And it lets me know some other information like when it was published and, oh, it supports Kindle. So if I wanted to read on my Kindle, I could do that. Now if I hit borrow, it'll let me know you are borrowing this from Harris County for 14 days. And then I'll hit borrow again. Now it's loading. So I can either keep browsing or go to the shelf or I can open the book. If I hit open book, it's going to let me start reading it right here and there. Um, so you have the cover. If I just swipe, um, when it loads, that is. Oh, there we go. Um, we've got, you know, table of contents and stuff. So cool things that you can do with this. You can add a bookmark. So, okay, this is the page I left off on. You can also search through the book. So maybe there's a, a name you want to look up. It'll give you a list of chapters, a list of your bookmarks. And you can do reading settings as well. If you want the print a little bigger, you can increase that. You can change the lighting if you want it a little dimmer. And uh, those are really cool. If I clicked on chapters, it'll let me search. Just click, okay, I'm going right to chapter 12, so that's really neat as well. And it shows me my progress, like it shows me where I've been. And that little black dot right there at the very end, that's a bookmark I made. So those are just some of the features you can use with ebooks. Now if I go back to the library, I'll show you what it looks like if I put a book on hold. I'm going to change this from available titles to everything, because as it's set, I can't even see books that I can put on hold. I'll go back and apply my preferences. The settings, you you have to reset the settings if you want to change your filters. So if you leave it as is, it's going to always keep those filters. So let's see. I really like mysteries. We'll see what they have there. Um, you can see up here there's some other settings listing 5,095 books and 1,600 audiobooks. So let's say I want an audiobook. Um, if it says borrow right here, that means it's available right now. Let's see if there's any I can place on hold. Apparently not. Oh well. Let's see here. So I'm actually going to click on the ebooks just to see, and you can refine it from here as well. So maybe I want to sort it by release date. I want the newest titles. And that'll kind of give me more of a idea. Okay, Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore. I've heard of that book. I can go ahead and place a hold. It'll again remind me what I'm doing. And now I've placed a hold. So it's um, really intuitive and very neat. I really like this app. Now another thing you can do, I'm going to go back to my main page. If you just go back to library, this is the main default page. You can do settings. So you can switch your library. So maybe I have a library card at more than one library. I can add that. It's one stop shop for all of your library cards. And then if I had added another card, it would show them here. You can actually go right here and add another card. Um, so this is good for families. If you have more than one person in your family using this app, that's a great place for you to have it as well. Hold notifications, it'll it gives me an email. 
Um, I can have a setting where the holds are barred automatically, so they're automatically downloaded. If I don't want that, I would just uncheck that. Um, download settings. So if you have only a certain amount of room, you could only select titles under 20 megabytes or nothing, and then you can choose what you download. Maybe you don't have a lot of room on your device. I do have it set for download only on Wi-Fi. Um, if you have a lot of data, maybe that's a setting you don't want to have. So if I click I read on another device, so if you do read on your Kindle, this is where you would change that. So if I read books in Libby, that I listen to audiobooks in Libby on another device, so this is my phone, but um, maybe I read books on my iPad. But if I read books on my Kindle, I would select that, and then um, the send to device is now send to Kindle. So it'll automatically send your books to your Kindle, um, as long as that email address is the same as your Kindle email address. Kindle email address. You'll make sure that you have that right. Um, yeah, so that's um, pretty much it. It's very intuitive, very easy to use, and it'll make borrowing ebooks and e-audiobooks so much easier. Thank you for your time.